This video is brought to you by patreon.com slash worst take. Get access to exclusive live streams and Discord servers, on-screen shout outs, and early access to some videos when you join now. Help make sure that we can continue to make content like this by supporting the Patreon. Links are in the description down below. What's up, everybody? This is Quincy. I got G. Bush on. You know, we like to do our thing on here. G. Bush is sporting the double panda. He got two pandas on right now. The barbershop panda. He got one down there, one one below. You know what, G? I, I have to ask this question. Okay. I have to ask two questions. One, did you used to sell candy out your backpack in high school? Because your entrepreneurial spirit tells me <laughs> that, you know, I don't think you were selling anything crazy, but I do think you had Jolly Ranchers and Double Mint. Like See, this is so okay. Let me let me give you this. So um back in the day, we used to we used to have like this candy store, but my mom was crazy. Um my mom and dad was like, listen. Do not go in no store with no kids. She was like so 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 she was like petrified of just randomly like have being like you accused of shoplifting or something, right? So she was like, we can go in there. So I used to have to get my candy all at once and I would have some on me, right? So I could eat after lunch. But the one thing I did sell and push, I don't know if this was a Midwest thing. I don't know if this is Ohio thing. Comment below if you, you guys catch this. If y'all was doing this too, we used to do something dumb called pencil fighting. Did you guys pencil fight? Maybe we called it a different name, but I don't. We would, we would, we would hold. Remotely. Like I would have a, I have had a, a pencil, right? And then you would pull your pencil back. This is a lot of Paul's worst tendencies. And then you would hit the other pen, pencil, and the other guy would hold his pencil like this, and you would try to break his pencil with your pencil, right? Oh. Um, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like, played, like, like I, what grade you talk about playing this in though? Because this was strictly elementary school. Yeah, yeah, this was this was really like a fifth grade, fourth grade type thing, fourth okay. grade, fifth grade, and and they used to so they outlawed it. Like it was just like student, like teachers, like was acting like you were selling crack. Um, but I used to sell these California redwood pencils, and I was known <laughs> as that guy, and and so. I, like they, they would. I, I would have people mobbing me right when I got into the building, and then they would. My, you know, the teachers would be like, "Listen, we know it's you. We know you got it's the you. red woods on you. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> why do you have seventy five pencils, pencils, Mister Bush? Hmm? No students needs that. No student needs seventy five pencils. Studious, what you mean? I'm just, like, I, listen, I'm, <laughs> I'm very particular about my wood grain. What you talking right, about? This, I, and they're like, yo, G. Bush got the best pencils. This is so pauseworthy. G. Bush got the best pencils in, in the whole, uh, uh, you know, county. So I was selling to different people, and we, they would pencil fight. And then they would bring, the, the teachers would go around the school and collect them and be like, these look just like your pencils that you have in your bag, Mr. Bush. What's going on? I said, that's allegedly. <laughs> I said, that, that, they, they got access to the same store I do. These That's, that's nothing new. Yeah, so I used to I used to uh, push pencils. You was not out too there much scratching candy. off the number two on it, so nobody yeah. could. <laughs> and by the way, baby, I looked up the reason why. Were, like the number two lead was um, number two lead is like I think this is a story. Um, that the reason they call it number two pencils because like there's they, it, it has something to do with the softness of the lead. So there was like a number one lead, and it was just too soft. So basically, number two pencils. Why we already had to have them. So yeah, so. That was weird, weird little thing I just randomly looked up one day. But I could be completely wrong, though. See, yeah. I was never a sell candy at the school guy, but I was. Uh, I used to sell candy to the family. I would buy extra candy with my allowance and then have it um, in my desk to sell so, to my brothers and sisters. So you would, dang, bro, you was getting, listen, this dude, is. You, it ain't nothing worse than selling it to your own family. Oh, yeah. Dang, bro. Like, <laughs> did they ain't get no discount or nothing? <laughs> nah, 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 absolutely not. Why? <laughs> Why? Like, dang, bro, they got, like, your brother, like, let me get one of them candy bars. Nah, dog, these is for selling. Because they used it's to like, try bro. to steal. I got to make up for my loss budget by selling them. You know, I got to raise prices now to, to cover that loss. Every time you steal a candy bar, just raise up the price, man. Like... <laughs> 
did you now did you get regular did you get regular allowance like was it was it what was it written in stone because what i found is um as I it was older, allowance that was based off of me not doing anything that would be worthy of a whipping like it, yeah as okay. long as yeah as long as i did that i would get like five bucks from my dad when he dropped us off yeah okay so it wasn't like yeah, like it was. It wasn't like. See, this is difference. Like, you see, you know, I'd be trying to tell. Like, you know, all my friends. You know, I was like one of only like four black people in the whole school. So I was, I was living my life depending on what they was doing and trying to compare it to mine. And they quickly said, "Don't compare that." I, they let me know we give you allowance because we, we it's out of the kindness of our hearts. But of no way, shape, or form do we have to pay you every Friday at this time. Like, and, and we can revoke that, and we can lower the price at any time. I'm like, dang. Everybody else get 20 bucks. I'm getting this little five and change. But look, you got that. Yeah, I see. One look. thing I always made sure I did was negotiate terms. Like, I wanted <laughs> to know what would get me in trouble. Like, that was my thing as a kid. <laughs> I used to negotiate. Like, that was always, like, my deal. Like, I remember one time I negotiated myself out of a whipping because my dad thought it was hilarious that the audacity to ask him, can, I, can we talk this thing out? <laughs> <laughs> You came to him. You came to him like like you was an adult too. And I was like, "Hey, this is a better way we can approach this situation." I used to negotiate everything, Christmas gifts. <laughs> I would I would leverage Christmas budgets into uh birthday budgets. Like, oh yeah, school clothes budget. You know, I'm like, hey, you know, I was under budget now. <laughs> like, hey, hey dad, I was, listen, I know you. I know you're super upset uh, right now, but uh, let, let's let let's let cooler heads avail here, like you know prevail. Like I, you know, there's other. We things need to that come up with a productive not solution, not an emotional solution, I, right yeah, now. Yeah, and right, right now, now, with me, it's just gonna be emotional. You're not gonna feel good about this. You know, how about we just take the PlayStation away for two weeks and then I'm willing to go to four, right? After four, I'm just going to take that whipping because that's a month. Like, you know, I'm, I'm like, willing. I'm willing to bust down these dishes for at least three nights and I'll uh -huh. give you the I'll give you a spaghetti night or a lasagna night because, you know, them plates is hard to scrub through. He's like, you know what? This is this kind of better. I'm getting chores. He's like, uh, well, listen here, Q. Wash my car. We'll call it a day and we'll, we'll say three weeks. No PlayStation. You like see how this works. Mm -hmm. yeah, you got to yeah. negotiate your old terms. Look, man, <laughs> it was a good skill to learn. Okay? It was a good skill to learn. Like, yes. Negotiate yes. your old terms. Look, that'll get you, if you're in college, negotiate your old terms will help you for maneuver some deadlines, right? Maybe you don't show up to class on time. Maybe you need to work out a deal with your <laughs> professor, right? Like maybe you need to learn to negotiate. Look, that's what I used to watch Deal or No Deal as a child. Like, Bro, <laughs> listen, you know, I, we used to negotiate before and um, negotiation has worked for me um, very well. Um, but me and my roommate, um, we failed our English class our junior year in college, right? Because Yo, we just was like, we weren't going. <laughs> like, we was like, yo, we missed like, we missed like one one day, right? We was like, yo, we about to go golf or go to the driver range and go get some hot cakes and sausage <laughs> from, from McDonald's. I forget you you went to Athens until you say right. stuff like that. <laughs> I was like, going to class like that. Like, no, no. And then, do, do you realize the sentence that you just said? I skipped class to go play golf and get yeah. hot sausage? Is it? Yeah, that's yeah, that's kind of crazy. I forget you went to school at Athens, and then you say yeah. stuff like that, and I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah. He, was, yeah. he went to OU. This teacher <laughs> kicked us. Then the second time, we, you know you had them classes where it's only one, you can only miss one day, two days, the whole semester. So we was in class. We come back the next day. We done. We got our football sweats on. We in the back of the class. And I got this problem where I'll be laughing at stuff that's not really funny, but it's funny to me. Like, somebody's like, yo, somebody got, got hit by a train and I laugh so hard because I'm like, who gets hit by a train, my dude? Like, that's crazy. You you gotta be dumb to do that. So then, in this time, we talking about trench warfare. We talk about, I think it was World War One or something. And uh, the teacher was reading this selection out of this, this novel and was talking about how people was like going, you know, jumping out of these trenches, running across these open fields and getting mowed down. And when she said mowed down, I don't know why I just started laughing. I just couldn't control myself. And the teacher hit me with the, with the cancel culture early. She was like, sir, 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 um, is there a reason um, 
that you feel like people in wars getting mowed down is is something you should laugh about. And I couldn't control it. When she said mowed down again, I just, we both started losing it. She was like, get out, get out now, get out. Man, she kicked us out of class. It was like, matter of fact, you already missed too many classes because I kicked you out today, fail. So I had to be like, yo, this is crazy. I didn't fail the class and it's only three weeks in. Not gonna lie, you earned that one, dog. That is, <laughs> come on, man. Come on. It was crazy. Listen, it was one of them joints where uh-uh. I didn't know. I didn't even nah. understand, bro. I kept thinking, like, you know what I'm saying? Tom and Jerry, when Tommy you sat at that, that, that old school roller push blade machine, nah. I just imagined these soldiers getting pushed and rolled over with that blade machine, like, like a random grass cutter. And I was, bro, I was losing it. Like, I was like, like it was tears coming down my eyes. I could not stop laughing, Q. I tried. I, I was like, it's done. It's it's over. You we might as well walk out the classroom before you get At that point. Out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, it's college. You could just leave. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah, I was nah. like, dang, this kind of crazy. Like, yeah, I, that was that was very, very crazy. Very nuts. That's nuts. That's nuts. Yeah. I I I feel like she was well within her rights to kick you out of that. Oh yeah, she got us. Listen, <laughs> hey, listen, I saluted her. I, <laughs> hey, I dapped her up on the way out of there like this, Q. Hey man, hey man, good shit, man. You supposed to do you you did what you were supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? But you know I'm mean? I, we was out of pocket. <laughs> but I'm seeing all of these dudes run these 40 times. Okay. And of course, there's the part of me that's doing my job, that's thinking about how these 10 yard splits and these 40 times they matter for the Browns, all this stuff. And then there's another part of me thinking, hey, dog, what's the last time I sprint? <laughs> like, Ooh. when's the last time? Ooh. Look, I want to know that in the comment section right now. Everybody Ooh. in the comment said, when was the last time? Not like ran a little hard, not like went to the, I mean, like you sprint. Sprinted. Like you were uh, trying to achieve a goal and you were sprint, not not like, working out. Sprint, like, like full sprint. Like I have to imagine you haven't sprinted since after one of your, like you said you had two knee surgeries or one? Yeah. No, I had, if you count the scopes, there's a hundred, there's lots of them. So a lot of things like since I had neck surgery, it was like 18 of them. So I, I probably feel the left knee and right knee. I feel like G. Bush's last time sprinting wasn't the last year he played football. It was somewhere in between that second and third knee scope. Like, oh, yeah. Because the- <laughs> yeah. I was trying out for, I was doing, the last time I really sprinted was like pro day. So um, I had missed my whole senior year. So I was, I was training to get ready and I, I was training to go to OU's pro day. And um, so obviously you got to, you know, practice these drills or whatever the case may be. But I was just sitting there the other day. I randomly was at Strongsville Mall, right? I was in there like, I told myself I was going to give me some shoes. You no, know, I'm knowing that's a lie. You know, they got no 15s. So I went in there and I just reverted to sitting in the food court eating food. So I was like, well, I'm in the food court. Might as well grab this food. I'm sitting there eating this food. And my back is towards the people in the food court, this line. So, you know, there's people walking behind me. And I had my, my coat out and my wallet was in my coat pockets. And randomly, I was just sitting there thinking like, what if somebody just grabbed up my, my stuff and just took off? I'm like, what would I have? Do I have any reserves left? Do I have any more get up <laughs> left in the tank? Like what I blow a hamstring out in the second or third step. Like I'm just, just contemplating it. I'm like, because in my mind, my mind keeps telling me, oh uh, yeah, you catching a civilian, any civilian, like you hawking them down, tackle for a loss, give me my stuff back and we gonna hold you to the cops come. <laughs> But yeah. now I'm thinking like this, Q, I might not got it. It might not be no get up in a tank left, dog. That's been tw- that's almost 20 years ago since I got that off. No what was that last 40 time? What, what was it? Do you remember it? Oh, yeah, it was it was one of the worst. It was a bad 40 <laughs> time, too. It was bad, dog. It wasn't even like it was like a and, and was it, it low it fives or high fives? Nah, bro. It was like a my last forty time was, and I was three about three ten was a four nine one. So you got to think about it, like yeah, three ten four nine one, and that's hand time. That that was that was electric. Oh, it was electric. All right, that was electric. But here's the thing, though. Just two years prior to that, I had ran a four seven nine. Mm. So, but that I was two sixty, but that still ain't even crazy, like. Um, 
at 260, at 270, 479 four, ain't, that ain't earth shattering, bro. That's Minimoski. But when I, I was like, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just, I'm going to just kick down to a three technique. And then I should be more fast than everybody, right? I'm thinking, okay, speed, agility, it go up. I'm in a different tier now. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Increase my bench, my vertical pretty good. But that 491, um, I was like, man, that's kind of crazy. It was like, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's arena league, dog. Serena. It's crazy because, like, every time I ever talk to Tyvis, I am reminded. When I watch, when I look, when I talk to, him, I'm like, this man ran four four, <laughs> like four yeah, four like, four three. He was fast, and he was telling me about how he got to the league and had to guard like Tyreek Hill, and he was like, I'm not that fast no more. <laughs> like, he was telling me, he was telling me how Doug Baldwin used to give him the work. He said Doug Baldwin almost sent me, almost sent me to the psychiatrist. He, I'm like, what? He said I had almost had to do counseling. He said he made me rethink. He was like, I I could have swore I was I was that dude. He was like. I, I would go to Richard Sherman and be like, Sherm, Doug Baldwin is unstoppable. How are, I can't get no hands on him. I couldn't jam him. I can't get no hands at the line of scrimmage. Sherman was like, hey man, you gotta you gotta try some different techniques. And don't, don't Doug Baldwin is nice. He was like, then he would play in the games and would be like, oh, see, this ain't that bad. Like Doug Baldwin is just nice. Like, you know what I'm saying? These other cats, I'm thinking it's if, if everybody is good as Doug Baldwin, we're out of here. It's done. <laughs> like it's just not gonna work. If everybody well, good is Doug, the the difference in athleticism is always something that's fun to like check because I don't think people understand the difference of athletic ability between like you in college and somebody else in college. Like just like not even a college football, like just a regular dude at the rec. Because I yes. remember or like the just difference between you your freshman year versus somebody in their senior year. Because I remember. When I was in school, I had some friends on the team that thought they was, you know, they was all state. They was pretty good, right? You got to be pretty good to get a scholarship to play football. Then they go up against them seniors, and then they they start bro. contemplating how seriously they want to take this whole football thing, man. Bro, look, there was a dude from Florida. This is the, Me and my brother played on the team, right? So my brother played offense. I played defense. So this guy from Florida comes in. It's the first day of camp, and this guy is on full scholarship, right? So... We get to we get to practicing, and this dude throws up like the f fourth or fifth period of practice. Like they like he's like, bro, what? How long is practice? We like, bro, we just in warm ups. What are you talking about? This man was hurt. So then we get through all of, like, we through team whatever. We get on scout team. He was on scout, of course, and they was giving him. They was they was just working on him on some inside zones, <laughs> and they inside zoned him so much. <laughs> and the guard and tackle double team them so much work to the next level. They just like, no, nah, you stay in here. <laughs> this guy, this got to be no more painful, like, realization of how different the game is. Like, I feel like to be, if you one of these dudes, it's like a third, fourth round pick, right? And you finally, like your third year in the league, you finally start to break through. That is a person who who has overcome a lot. Because, like, you felt this before. The helplessness you feel when another team is just bigger, stronger, and faster than you on the line of scrimmage, it's it's it, it's got to be something where you got to reconsider some things because I couldn't imagine trying to go up. I'm used to overpowering people. The next thing I know, I'm just getting moved like I'm on a crate. <laughs> like skates, We're like we're skates. Q. We played we played Minnesota in 2003, right? We played them. It's the first big game we got on. It was on a on a janky little uh, ESPN side channel. It was on ESPN Plus, and um, we got Minnesota that came in, right? We like yeah, bro. We the number one. We was like in the top five in in in, in, in rushing yards allowed. We wasn't allowed no rushers. Like we was just like yeah, we stopped the run. You got the Ooh. pass on us. Wait they wait came. wait wait wait. Yeah, wait, go ahead. You wait. know who they had. Go ahead. Was talk that, to was them. that Lawrence Maroney? <laughs> And Marion Barber. Oh, <laughs> Marion Bar Marion Marion Barber hit us for like 140. Ooh. They brought Lawrence Maroney in and he got like 127. We was like, yo. Hey, hey, what does that feel like when the starter's really good? He's Marion Barber, been in the league for a minute, right? And then they bring in this new dude who's better. <laughs> it, it was a it, cue. It was just up front. Like it was crazy because we was up there and the center was so fast.
fast. Like, people don't understand, like, there's levels like, yeah, linemen ain't fast, but when you inside the tackle boxes, there's speed in there, too. He was, like, base, he was reaching us, and he was reaching us two gaps away. We play, like, a 3-4 hybrid. He was all the way out, and, and he was reaching our five techniques. We're mm. like, how was he that fast? It was nuts, bro. It was, like, crazy. And then he, they was getting the ball, <clears throat> and they would they would they wouldn't get touched for five, six yards. We came in after that game. Coach was like, Yeah, come in at uh, seven o'clock. We got there. He said, like, Yo, we ain't even gonna watch listen, we ain't even gonna watch that game. We just going on to the next week. <laughs> we had like Kent State the next week. He was like, Yeah, we won't we were on to hey, we're on the hey, I bet the golden flashes never felt so light. Oh, <laughs> we was out there thugging. <laughs> it was thugging. Uh, ah, yeah. I told this you. This more like we was, it. We was coming for y'all. Y'all want that smoke? He was like, listen, don't take it out on us. We saw that film from last week. Oh, <laughs> oh, nah, nah. But the combine's around. It's an interesting draft combine because now we're starting to see this divide of players realizing that they really don't got to take this test, right? It's a standardized test and... You know, some of them don't got to do it. It started with quarterbacks not throwing, and now we're getting even guys like Marvin Harrison Jr. Decided not to run. I mean, with quarterbacks, this stuff hasn't been new, right? right. I, Lamar Jackson didn't do any 40 drills, right? right? Like, this this, this wasn't anything new. Quarterbacks ain't been throwing at the combine for a little bit here. But for position, skill position players, especially wide receiver, to not run the 40. Is interesting now. It's crazy. I, I, it's strategic, right? He's not gonna. He's not a forty-time wide receiver, right? And right. I don't think the combine highlights his strength. So to the guys who have that, they will always do the combine. But I do think the combine is is changing a little bit, and I think the change is this thing is going to start to be more important for defensive players, not because of scouting, but. For whatever reason, this is where a lot of defensive stars are born. And I think one of the reasons it is is because you can look at, like, Miles Garrett. And it's easy to tell everybody at the Combine why Miles Garrett is special. Because all you got to do is say, he runs the 40 faster than, like, 70% of wide receivers. Right. He jumps higher than 90% of them. He is Odell Beckham's vertical and faster than Jarvis Landry. Right, like right. that is at 260, well, 275 pounds or something like that. And that kind of tells you, like, those dudes, I think, get their stars created at the combine. RG3, he was a star in college, but really it started to come in in the combine too. Um, but like somebody even, like Josh Allen, right? We found out about Josh Allen here. Those guys kind of get their stars made. But I don't know how important, the actual drills are to the evaluation anymore. Yeah, I, you know, I, I start to look at it like this, Q. Um, I think this might be more, start to be more of a thing that is tailored towards um, smaller colleges, right? There's only a certain amount of people that get uh, in, get the invite uh, to the combine, right? So, you know, there's a lot of guys out there that, that you kind of fall through the cracks a little bit, but when you start looking at the big names like Marvin Harrison, you start looking at, uh, uh, you know, some of the all the great, great receivers that they got in this draft. Um, I think in the future, it'll be like bowl games. For Before, everybody played in bowl games. Now it's like, man, if I'm anywhere getting drafted in, in the first two rounds, I'm not doing it. And they, they're they wise to not do it because some of, the, some of the exercises won't show just how dynamic you are in the field. Like, I don't think Marvin Harrison Jr. is running like a, a four three or four two. I think he's a solid four four guy, but he's the best receiver because of what he do in the field. I think the combine will start to be more guys like, hey, let's invite some guys as D two, D three, NAIA, whatever the case may be. Uh, you know the the subdivisions, and let's give these guys a chance because then we can find a diamond in the rough a little easier. We might be able to identify and flesh it out. And if you're a guy that, that you know is is part of that younger division or the smaller division or MAC schools like that, you're going to take that opportunity because it's an opportunity for you to show your skill set that you now for little schools, you still got to go to the combine. That's why pro days is really huge for, for small schools. Um, but I think they may, I, I think you're right. I think it'll, they, it'll put a less degree of importance on the combine uh, for the bigger name schools and the power five schools. We're going to see the combine 
Like, I think that they'll eventually find ways to spice it up, right? And it's going to be one of those things, I think, in like 10, 15 years, we're going to forget had an actual purpose, right? Because the purpose <laughs> the purpose has not, like, the purpose is no longer served. Like, technology has got to a point to where you can pretty much get everything you need from the tape, right? You can even figure out how fast these guys are moving at their peak in pads on tape with all the with the uh, RFID tags that they have in there now. So all of that stuff is not really needed anymore, but it's still a spectacle. And I expect the NFL to go all in on that spectacle. Look, man, we going to be talking about the NFL draft combine games in a, in a couple years. Where it's I like, all right, that. who runs the fastest? We going to have races. You know, who throws the furthest? We going to see dudes do the accuracy uh, combo. Because, like, really what it's going to be is basically, like, the Senior Bowl's a – all-star game, but a game. This right. will be a all-star kind of weekend kind of thing like the Pro Bowl is, where it's a media week. You can have Radio Row. You can have everybody who works for the league be there um, and ownership and everything else. Like, it's just going to become a convention. That's basically, like, quiet is kept. That's the main function of the NFL combine for Behind the NFL. Doors, yeah. yeah, for mm -hmm. the NFL, right? Like, NFL teams, like, yeah, the 40, whatever, but they can get that shit at home. They don't really need to be there. The reason why every team goes is it's essentially a NFL industry convention. It is basically that every year in Indianapolis where media is there, personnel. You'll find ex-coaches, people trying to get a job over there. What? Like, it's it's all over there, right? What better way, what better way, Q? to judge and, and see how smart a player really is by taking on two other pros and young kids in trivia. Let's see how <laughs> smart you really are. 10 seconds on the clock. I love hey, it. Hey, like it. you know what? They could replace the whole thing with a batted tournament for the quarterbacks, and I feel like I would learn more I, than I, I do with the – I feel like the, I would watch that. I feel like I would learn more because, look, I'm, hey, if, if, if you got a quarterback in there, Drake Bay in there, and he in a 4 -fit 5 and he throw the check down, off the list, baby. Off the – now you can't even be aggressive in a video game. You got a quarterback don't want to scramble. Now what's wrong with you? Off the list, baby. Like, look. Look, these things, it sounds ridiculous, but it's probably what it's going to end up being over time. Like, it's not going to be like next year they're going to change it or anything like that. But as less and less stars do the combine, we're going to see them kind of adjust it and tweak it. And I wouldn't be surprised that it's a full-on convention in 10 years because that's where it's heading and that's where it's useful. And I think that would there would be some more use out of that. And then, like, you could add some virtual reality stuff that I think would be interesting where it's like, okay, um, reaction time, right? You ever play one of them boxing games in, in virtual yeah. reality? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like, the stuff's good. Like, the technology's getting really good now. We got so, that a little bit. Yeah, like, so, I, like... I, I, 60 meter dash for the for the skill. Do we mm -hmm. hey we ain't gonna have you run a hundred, but what you got in the 60? I want to see what your short direction change. Like, I want to see what that is. I want to see what the close. Do you got breakaway speed? That I love to see that. Yeah, well, like and, and, and one on ones. Now one on ones when the internet pops. One on ones with civilians and on the internet jumps. Can you, can you imagine if you you got one on ones out there and cats is getting dosed up? I'm like, I think, I think what it. will happen with the draft process is the senior bowl will be a little bit more important and the combine will be essentially a convention, right? An important convention, but a, a convention. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if especially like if they moved it down like a month um, after free agency so they could just have that clean free agency pump at the free agency then they can use that because it's not like the drills matter for for draft anymore like so if you have yeah. that then it's like the winter fine. meetings mm -hmm. like 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 if they could if they could at the combine queue like at the winter meetings in baseball if they can have those guys get together and just be like okay we got the winter meetings we got the combine and let's get together and discuss some of these guys in free agency, right? Because one thing that I've always wanted and I always thought was underutilized um, in the NFL was trades. 
um, trades are, you know, in the ways that you can, you know, go out and acquire talent, trades are, are kind of the lower end. Um, we, we love the NFL draft. We understand free agency is there. Um, and, uh, you know, other than that, trades comes like last. And, and I think people don't trade as much as they should. Um, because they're not as familiar. Like, they're, they're just like, yo, we haven't been around. Maybe if you could get those guys to talk about it at the combine, you could start to lay some groundwork for some some blockbuster deals where people can – that's one of the that's one of the things that makes the NBA really cool is the trades. Well, I think the reason you don't see the trades are the pressure points when trades happen in the NFL aren't as convenient in the, as they are in the NBA. I think Andrew Barry talked about moving the trade deadline, um, yeah. which, yep. which makes a ton of sense. But not even just that. Think about it like this. If you're in the NBA, the draft happens before free agency. Right? Yeah. So you get to draft, then you get to go into free agency, then right. you work trades out, right? Yeah. And you have all of that time. It just layers correctly. In the NFL, it's draft, free agency. Well, it's free agency, then draft. Yeah, and which then, is kind of goofy. Yeah. So like, it's like, okay, you might sign somebody and then this and that. So it, it's, it, it works out kind of backwards and i'm like okay if you move this thing closer to the draft uh and because the the workouts yeah let the like it'll be more about like okay it's like a no it's a, it's a pro bowl for college players right like if you're mm -hmm. invited to the combine that becomes you know we're going to talk about that on your draft profile he's a combine invitee not necessarily yes. what they did at the combine it'll just become something like that and then you have like different interviews happening there. But also what you do have is like teams like, all right, this is why I have a free agency. This is what we have in our draft. All right, we probably going to have to make a move at wide receiver. Let's make a move at right. wide receiver, right? And then there, they're going to probably make those moves there. But it's it just, it, it, there's not a really great time to do it. And I think there's, there's a ton of reasons why they want to would want to move it eventually. Um, and look, they're trying to make this a, a, a spectator, a spectacle, right? They, they, Aired on TV now. They you could buy tickets to the combine and just sit there and watch it. I don't know why anybody would want to do that. But let me, let me you ask can you, do let that. Me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Um, do you think the in, in the scheme of things, do you think the Pro Bowl, not the Pro Bowl, sorry, Pro Days, um, have kind of uh, minimized the use of the uh, combine? Do you believe that teams are like more interested in the, in, in the uh, pro days rather than the combine? What do you What do you think is more important? I, at one They're point all... in time, I would have said the combine, but now it's like they got other opportunities. And then pro days are usually later too. In the process. they care about the pro day because that's the last check in, right? So with some players, like let's say I'm worried about G. Bush's weight, right? And G. Bush is a Senior Bowl invitee, a combine invitee, and obviously has a, has a pro day. I want to see what his weight is at the senior bowl. I want to see what his weight is at the combine. I want to see what his weight is at the senior at the at the pro day, right? Like that that check in matters to see the progress that you could do. But you can just send them the shit, right? Like, yeah, right. Well, or or go to like a third party person and just do an ind independent weight in for all NFL teams if that's right. really a concern. Like the pro day, it's probably. It's not as convenient for GMs, right? Because GMs want to see the top 150 prospects in one place. In the combine, it's the one place you can get that at. I'm going to see the top 150 and be able to compare them against each other and talk to those guys. What pro days allow you to do is just see guys all across your board. So, you know, you might be – the C.J. Stroud might be the headliner, but you also might want to talk to, um, you know, this linebacker who you feel like might go in the fifth round and see what he does and all of that, right? That's for your area scouts. So the issue is that with the combine going the way that it is where people are going to participate in it less and it's not going to be a pure look at the top 150, the scouting element of it doesn't really make too much sense anymore. And once that becomes the case, well, if I'm just going to see certain guys, I might as well just go to the pro days or, or pick yeah. the pro days yeah. that I want to go to or just look at the tape um, and trust my area scouts. And it's like everything's going to get more remote. Like I feel like that's the way that we're going and it's just going to be like that and maybe the senior bowl. Like if 
if the player that is that has to play in the senior bowl is not different from the player that has to do the combine, then you're probably just going to go to the senior bowl, right? Because that's that's the one thing that's changed and why the senior bowl kind of benefits from this because if there's these two classes of – there used to be a class of combine guys, senior bowl guys, right? Like everybody do the combine. Some of them do the senior bowl. Yeah, but like now, the big games. But now the dudes who are going to throw at the combine are not different than the dudes who are willing to throw at the senior bowl at large part. So it's like, well, now the senior bowl is where you get to see most of the guys that you would be able to see in that one group setting. Now, I do think I do think pro days are beneficial, more beneficial for other positions than other other others. Um, I think quarterbacks, it's more important for um, because you get an opportunity to kind of accentuate and highlight through your script exactly what you want to show teams like if you're a t- you guys say hey listen um i don't know if he has deep his deep ball tendencies i don't know if he can throw the ball deep i don't know if he can push it downfield they might come out with his first four or five plays off the script seven step five step and play action we're going up top we're going to just show y'all what we get hey we don't know if he can he can he can make that deep out all right with well, a deep comeback route you come out, you show what he's going to do. I don't know about the pocket presence. So there, there's a lot of things that you could do uh, that I think people, pro days are more tailored to. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things where they say, came out of the pro day, on, only one ball hit the turf the whole time, Q. Yeah, <laughs> but it, 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 to me, it's like, okay, is the pro, pro days help if you're looking for one, like if you're looking for a quarterback, pro days are important. Because you get the most in-depth look at that one guy. Like, if you're there for one guy, the issue with the pro day is if you want to see five guys, then that becomes difficult because all of these pro days are scheduled at different times. I wouldn't be surprised if eventually we just got – this is the SEC's pro day, right? And then the school's pro days will become for, you know, those fringe guys. Right, and and, like, and it, that works out better for the smaller people. Like if you are if you are a six round linebacker from Minnesota, if you're going to the Big Ten's pro day, you're gonna get the eyeballs of Michigan, Ohio State, USC, mm-hmm. UCLA, Pitt, Washington, so Oregon. So I like that because it it, it becomes then, more of a track meet, right? Like regional then you track turn meets. one scouting combine into four, right? Yeah, two that we gonna care about. Really one. I know Ohio State fans. Y'all try to the Big Ten. Yeah, I get it. There's some good players in the Big Ten, but Oh, we got Oregon now, Q. We got Oregon yeah, to Washington. Got Oregon. Yeah, yeah, I know. I we know, got I know. USC. I, I know. We, it's we, getting better. That, it's getting it's, it's it's almost but like they still got Alabama, Georgia, Florida, LSU. Yeah. <laughs> Texas, Oklahoma. <laughs> Texas, Oklahoma. Yeah, dog. And don't schedule it on the same day as theirs, right? Oh, but I yeah. think that I think that <laughs> conference is gonna see that opportunity to get some money and the NFL's gonna be like, Yeah, well, you gotta have a partnership with us. And then that's what's gonna happen. It's like, okay, now that most of the like day one and two talents going to be in those two conferences that that's going to be where they kind of like halo in on. And if you're the sec and you're the big 10, it benefits you two ways. You get to have a combine event, which is more advertising for your uh, conference and probably a television deal as well. So an additional event, but also it's another selling point where it's like, Hey, you play in the sec, you make all sec team. You're going to be able to be in our combine, which is attended by all 32 teams. So not only is that like Alabama's pro day is always going to be attended, but now it'll be like, hey, if you go to Missouri, right, or Arkansas, now those, the guys that might go there or Purdue or, or Rutgers might be better quality because they're like, hey, I have a better chance to be seen in the pro, in the pro, post draft process, um, or in the pro, pre draft process. <laughs> At these schools, because I get access to their uh, conference combines, so I, I'd, inv- I'd invite. I'd invite. I would. I would throw a wrinkle in there. I'd invite underclassmen. No, no, I'm saying like, oh, Freshman, like let them, wanna, like hey, come on over here and see what you sophomores. What you got, Mike? Like, I feel like. Well, here's where you could. So now that it's a conference thing, right? Instead of C.J. Stroud having to throw to who's there at the combine. Hey, CJ, you can bring three people, you know? And then all of a sudden, it also works as a way to get eyes on, like, a Marvin Harrison Jr. before. Like, you know, it, right. it's, it's 
This is, I think the NFL will just fully turn that combine into its own like little, it, it's basically going to be like an all-star game kind of thing where right. it's not really about the, the drills anymore. And then I think others, like the big two conferences eventually are going to take over for like having their own like little thing that the NFL will partner with. And that's where you get some of this stuff because there's just too many players to do this thing regionally and not expect that we're going to miss guys through the cracks. And I think this is going to be their big solution is try to funnel everybody to those two conferences, but would you, or at least would those you two conferences. The, would you invite the excess? For, what was it? What is it now? The, the UFL? UFL? Oh, is, yeah. is, Why not? Why not? Yeah, like, well, uh, I, they, they, they play in the spring. So like you wouldn't have their players there, but like you would have their teams there for sure. Because Look, the thing about the SEC is, yeah, there, there's a lot of day one, day two guys, but there's also guys who kind of are only going to get looks by NFL teams simply because of their resume says Alabama on it, right? Right. Those are guys that the UFL would want to pick up, right? Maybe you want to extend your career. Maybe you're a raw prospect, didn't play that much. Maybe you need to play some more football, go to the UFL for a couple of years and come on back. Um, and I think, like, this is the last thing because this video is getting kind of long. The solution to getting young kickers is the UFL because nothing simulates the pressure right. in the island that you are on as a kicker mentally than just playing professional football. And you see the guys who kicked at the UFL? They don't flame out. Like Brandon Aubrey, who was a USFL guy, you know, he played MLS soccer. He wasn't even a college football kicker. Goes to the Cowboys, he's the best kicker in the league. That pressure don't mean yeah. nothing to him because he's used yeah. to it, right? Because he, he, they kick him like that. Yeah, because so it's it's professional football. Like in college, you're on the team. Like you remember how many kickers oh you had when you were there? They had like you like, know five guys, four or five dudes. It's a whole squad of them, right? Like where in the NFL, there's three of y'all. <laughs> there's a log snapper. There's a punter. There's a kicker, and all three of y'all ain't gonna be the same age. Yeah. Like. Yeah, so so who are you kicking it with? Because you were kicking, you kind of an outlay, an out layer on the team. So it's like, okay, so you just got to find a way to be comfortable. And them yep. USFL dudes, look, you eight, hey, you think it's kicking. not that many kickers in, in the kicking NFL? Look, in the UFL, it's just you, and you might be punting, <laughs> right? Like you just got to figure out how to manage that environment mentally, and also understand that you are one kick away from this going very wrong for you. Um, there's not really that safety net. So, yeah, I think, like, I wouldn't be surprised if teams just start, like, exclusively looking at young kickers through the UFL, because what we're seeing is when you draft these dudes, you end up having to cut them. And yeah, especially, somebody especially. else looks like a genius because you cut them. And, and, and there's a lot of them. Yeah, I look at the, I, I just keep looking at the, the number of kickers the Browns got out there that they cut from from Austin Cyber to Zane Gonzalez to to the, the old boy Cade York. All these dudes just still in the league for some reason. Um, and you got the dudes you got right now. So it's like it's it's musical chairs. I agree. Like you can find it. There's no substitute for um, just game reps, especially when it comes to special teams. So. Mm -hmm. And there's no substitute for just the structure of an NFL, like a, a professional football team. It's just different, right? Yeah. Like, you you just, it's not going to be as easy to fit in. It's not going to be as easy to get comfortable. It's going to be awkward. You're going to be nervous as hell every time you kick. Not because of the game situation, but you know, mm -hmm. like, you, you miss a kick and you a kicker in college, like, you might just not start in. Okay. Right. Ain't no not starting. In you, professional you just, football, as it's, a kicker, it's called, yeah, it's called it's welcome either, to the workforce. Yeah, either you are the kicker or you don't have a job, right? Like, there's no, <laughs> I'm gonna just be demoted to the backup, right? There, there's no, oh, well, you know, I might not start this week. Like, nah, dog. Like, think about how much pressure that puts on quarterbacks when they're worried about getting benched and how that affects them and how we have to navigate that into how they play. Like, well, you know, he never was confident that he was starting, and that's just worried about getting benched. These dudes, right. like, three bad games, they don't get benched, they get cut, and that's different. Like, you got to walk back to your family. Sometimes you <laughs> might have a kid, maybe a wife, and tell them you lost 
yo think about how little you want to tell your family you lost your job and think and, about that being on the table every time you go out there and kick a football and then you might understand the pressure that these dudes go to and i think people think i'm mean about kickers i'm just realistic about it i know what that I, that's the pressure right that's what they're thinking about every time they kick a football ain't no dude out of college gonna be able to do that <laughs> like, if, if you if you want to think like, about if you want to talk next time you talk to Tyvis, ask him about he talks about it all the time. I said, what was the day where how it is it when you get cut? Like what like what is that like? And he'll tell you a great story about like just the ups and downs of just being like, yo, I gotta go tell my wife I got cut. So he got he got great story about that. So next time you see him, ask him about that joint because because it's real. It get real out here, bro. Mm -hmm. And Tyvis has had to worry about that around the 53 cut down, right? Like, you know, you make the team. And now you, you make the team. Now it's like, okay, I might bounce from the practice squad to the active roster or whatever. Ain't no practice squad for no kicker. None. <laughs> like, None. hey, you ain't getting well, called. Well, K, K, K York got put on the correct practice squad, but I think that's because he was a fourth round pick. Yeah. Like yeah. they're like, oh, I'm about to he take a made a 63 you. yard field goal, his first kick. Like that wasn't enough. That man lasted one year, one, one year. Hey, it's a different type of pressure, and you ain't gonna feel it if you start out making all these kicks. But the second you miss three in a row, yeah, it's gonna become real to you. But G, thank you for coming on. I have no idea what I'm gonna title this video. Y'all have a great day. <laughs> have an even better night. Peace. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>